Hey guys, it's me, Shane. I'm here to give you another Yashihime episode, well, sorry, Yashihime Have Demon Princess uh, episode review and recap. Today's episode is episode 16, Double Edge Moraha. So, let's get into this episode because I have some feelings. I have some feelings. Uh, Moraha, be the episode begins with Moraha and all, all the girls are t bringing out their weapons and Moraha says, I'm going to tell you about a story. That happened three years ago. Because we already knew this was going to happen. Because last episode was about uh, Ren having the twins. And uh, this some some kind of plot that Shomu has had to you know make sure that they would be safe. And they would be properly trained. And and then uh, Inuyasha and Kagome you know, sending off Moraha to the wolf tribe. Really great episode. And this one was supposed to be a Moraha centric episode. All the princesses are getting ready to fight with her teacher, uh, Yawaragi. Really good name. Really cool looking character. There she is right there. She's a cool looking character. Uh, apparently three years ago, <laughs> three years ago, it had been three years since the chief of the wolf demon tribe had given Yagarari, uh, had given her the task with being uh, Morha's tutor, her teacher, you know, to try to fight and whatnot. And she brought her to this crucible of Kudo. Um, there's a seal on it that demons are constantly fighting to get more power. And it's had over 100 demons. At the moment, we saw like two different demons. One looked like a dinosaur versus a centipede versus some other thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, now she said, Morha, you go in and take care of it. And once you, once you survive, you know, if you survive and win, um, she gets the uh, Kurikiri. That sword that Moraha carries around. And uh, Moraha's like, I can't. I, I, she really has doubts that she can do it. But she tells her, you know, go and do your thing. Uh, she forbids her from using the rouge. So, in between, we're in the shots between Moraha fighting the last demon, which looks like a dinosaur with the head on the stomach and uh, has like a centipede wrapped around his arm. Obviously, the demons are absorbing each other. It's very reminiscent. Of the time that uh, they went through this force field, they had the woman who was Kirara's original owner and had the uh, Shikon jewel form. It was very reminiscent of that. And we have Yako Robbie talking with Jubei, the corpse dealer, explaining just tons of expedi expeditions. And I have three pages of note. I want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, I have given so much exposition, saying, you know, she has this armor of. Uh, Iron Iron Rat on. She's trying to get it off for some reason. Um, it's gonna cost her some money. So she apparently, cause apparently, uh, she gave Yoraha to the ga the demon gambling broker for the Crucible. And she also lost this game. I, I thought it was Shogi. Looked like some weird ancient tic tac toe. She lost this game with Jubei. Gave the things that she needed to him, but she's also short. She needs about fifteen Rio. I don't understand the money system in this world, but 15 Rio to get the key to get the thing off, to get her armor off. Uh, she also explains why she put her in a crucible, because he says she's just a quarter demon. Her The issue she that Moraha has is just like her name. I didn't know Moraha meant double-edged, but just like her name, Moraha has this power that when she gets cornered, you know, she lets the demon out of her and it's going to take over her. And little by little, she's going to have no heart. Her heart's going to be gone. And that's what happens with the Rouge. Apparently, Kagome had put a seal on her. Sorry, Lady Kagome, because that's what they give her so much respect. Lady Kagome put a seal on uh, Yumoraha to make sure that would be in check. But the Rouge brings it out of her, even for the short spurts. And... You know, Ijube saying without the ruse is kind of hard, but I get it. You know, she's trying to teach her a lesson. Moraha makes it out because she goes back to her teacher saying, you don't need to use the ruse. Find a creative way how to win. You can win without doing that. Moraha tries to reason with the demon saying, hey, how about we both get out of here? He's like, what? Because Moraha's trying to use her spirit arrows. He's like, wait a minute, you smell like a human. I'm a quarter demon. We should muddy the crucible. With uh, this muddied quarter demon blood. He's trying to talk to the demon broker. We never see this entity, mind you. So she fires an arrow which burns off half of his face. The last time she took off his hand, part of his hand, 
she took off his face that hurt him so much and the power underneath him was rising up so she's running around this thing to get out breaks through the barrier and leaves catches up catches up with her teacher says i'm done with your gambling that's i can't believe you sold me off like that our two religious you you teaching me is done we're done give me the sword because i live but we're done and this is the first time she meets Jubei, she doesn't she has no respect towards this guy and uh yawaragi yawaragi still has to get this money to get this stupid thing off he he being Jubei says how about this you sell her to me i'll give you 15 mon and i'll take care i'll take care of the uh the whole broker thing and everything She's like, done. So now, you know, Morha's like, why do I need to listen to you? And he said, well, you can either go back and deal with the uh, demon, you know, the demon broker with the crucible and fight fight there until you die. Or you can just pay off your debt here by doing demon bounties. That's where this happened. So it makes sense. And it kind of makes sense on why Morha was hesitant to talk about it before and why she was close to telling him because she was getting frustrated with not being able to collect bounties. And so now we have, we go back to the present where the girls are, you know, the girls are about to fight, but she tells them, don't, I'm a fighter. And we get another flashback. Uh, I believe we do get another flashback where, uh, you know, uh, Moraha says, so you didn't find the, uh, the, I don't want to say Iron Rat, the, the, the rat village, the hidden rat village. And he said, yeah, I did, but everybody was slaughtered when I get there, when I got there. So we do a little, another flashback where she gets to, first of all, I always thought that the robe of fire rat or iron of fire of, uh, iron rat armor, this cursed armor now, I always thought they was just made out of like a fire rat. Like they just killed a bunch of fire rats. Wove these things together. They're resistant to fire. Boom. You got this robe. That's not the case. It's this hidden village. Kind of. I liken it. And I'm sorry for using more Naruto terminology. But I liken it. Actually, I can liken it to. Uh, no. I can liken it to. You know, like the hidden frog village. Where Naruto went to train. It's a hidden village. Full of these were rat people. She went on the wall looking for the keys. Couldn't find one she looked for. And look who's behind her. It's Cone Tone. Of the Four Perils. This very annoying character. And not annoying in the good way of Naraku. Annoying as in you don't seem all that strong and you seem pretentious for no reason. Anyway, he says, hey, I know you want this key, right? But would you believe that, you know, the four perils, we're technically two perils now. And you're a student. Kill one of our guys. So, uh, yeah, why don't you, I want you to kill her. She says, why don't you do it? Because uh, I think it'd be amusing for uh, Toketsu or Tone, whatever the whatever the stupid one that get killed, right? He he's saying that he's doing it for him to get entertainment from the great beyond, but really he's just a jackass. Part of my language, dude's a jackass. I'm gonna get to how I feel about this part later. Anyway, so it's gonna be a one on one fight. The armor apparently shrinks year to year. So however long it takes, it's going to finally shrink until it becomes the size of a rat and crushes her. Un just unbelievable. Well, now Morha and her teacher are fighting. And she says, hey, I heard you've been using the Crimson Dragon Wave. How is it? You know, you're a quarter demon. You know, it's probably pretty weak. And she does the wave and goes right after her inside the wave going after her teacher. <laughs> Yarawagi just kind of just backhands her and breaks the wave like using her own power and they're going they're doing a little bit of back and forth not really because she has the upper hand the entire time uh toa not toa but the yaragi does this move called scattering winds where she gathers up her energy in the fist and punches and just makes like a wind tunnel the twins are basically saying we want to help you we cannot let you fight her one-on-one -on -one. and she's like no i'm gonna do it i'm gonna fight her and, you know, her sword gets taken away from her, so she busts out the rouge. And her teacher goes, I told you, you don't, you should not use that. You're going to lose your heart. And she's like, shut up, it's my power. I, I, you know, I'll do whatever I want with it. And Yaragi makes a good point of saying, hey, if all, if your only purpose and your only good, the only thing you're good for is fighting, and you're nothing but a monster, and 
yeah, we don't really eat. Monsters don't deserve to live. So she does this funny thing, which reminds me of a fighting game, where she's just slashing her in the air, juggling her in the air until she does like a sidekick and knocks her down. And during this, she gives a speech saying, you know, if you don't, if if you do not uh, live with your fear and face your fear, you know, then you won't know pain. And if you don't know pain, you won't understand the pain of your opponents. Basically saying, do fear is a thing that you're going to have to face. If you don't recognize that you have fear, then you won't recognize that the person fighting you has fear and you won't have any respect for that interaction. Uh, Toa still wants to help us as soon as says, no, she's trying to teach her a thing. And, you know, Moraha thinks back to when she first used the Rouge. And this is a nice little fan service. Uh, the Harpies. Those giant harpies from Inuyasha, where uh, Inuyasha and Koga were trying to save Kagome, and uh, they're dealing with the wolf tribe. Koga had stolen some of the jewel shards, put them put them in his legs and his arm, and one of the harpies had ate one and became a double harpy. So these things are attacking attacking Morha. Morha's taking cover, uses the rouge. When her teacher tries to stop her. Morha just goes feral, kills all the ones around, but ends up slashing her. That's why she has the three slash marks, pardon me, on her cheek. That came from Morha. And quickly, soon after Morha pa uh, passes out, there are more harpies coming because apparently one of them called for help like, like they do. And um, this weasel man comes out of nowhere says, hey, this iron rat armor could protect you against those harpies. It, it's really super strong. And she's like, hmm, okay, cool. He's like, yeah, you just put this key in the back and unlock it off of me. <sighs> this asshole weasel literally just tricked. Once she does the key, it goes off of him and it comes onto her. And he's like, oh, thank goodness. By the way, the thing's going to keep shrinking. You should go and, uh, you know, get someone to make you another key and make sure you get someone else to open it on you. All right, bye. <sighs> So before she even wonder worry about this situation, she's gathering up her energy, and apparently the cursed armor lends itself to having uh, more strength and giving her more power. She does her scattering winds, and it's a cloudy, rainy day with these harpies coming down. Not only does she obliterate the harpies, she makes a hole in the clouds, and it's just a beat, you know, a nice little beacon of light coming down on them. Moraha comes too, and she realizes that she put the slashes on her face, and thinking of this moment made her close it. Even uh, Yawaragi says, oh, you're thinking about that moment too, huh? So, they're going to have a final showdown between teacher and student, which is, is ridiculous because Moraha at the beginning of this said, I have no, I, I don't feel any uh, appreciation towards you. I, I'll take you out. And, you know, Yawaragi smiling, like, yeah, that's why you, that's why you were my student. Whatever. So, they're getting ready to have their last showdown. Kontone appears behind Yaragi with the key saying, ha ha ha, I came to, you know, take a look at this. Tee hee hee hee. So, she says, alright, yeah, you make sure you take a good look. She does her scattering winds move. Moraha takes the blade, turns it, you know, turns it backwards and starts spinning it. And after she spins it, she then does the move, which looks like it has like a bit, rota a bit of rotation to it. The Crimson Dragon overtakes the, the wind move and is coming straight down. Uh, Yaragi vanished, does a little vanish behind Kontan and does one of these straight up Goku on Raditz. Like, hey, I'm gonna take us both out. This fool's he has a blue, uh, the blue pearl. His blue pearl teleports him. She takes the whole move, gravely injuring her, even though there's no blood or anything. But this move gravely injures her. This jackass. Kontone just runs away. You know, the, the other the other girls are trying to attack him and get to him because he's an evil jackass. And Moha runs up to her teacher and she's like, you know, I'm glad that I could help teach you the, you know, the final move, which is called the Crimson Backlash Wave. And I'm pretty sure we all know the Backlash Wave that Inuyasha did. He was in a similar situation where he trying not to rely on his demon energy, but trying to see... Uh, not just see the area of the wind where the the opponent's energy is meeting his energy, but being able to turn around and send it back to them. And well, 
Call Crimson Backlash Wave. More on that in a moment. Uh, you know, she's they they say their goodbyes. Moraha very tearfully calls out her teacher's name. Uh, pretty it, it's it's it, you know no one no one enjoyed the moment. I I certainly I still felt bad regardless of my feelings towards certain things in this episode. Uh, they do give her a burial, and Moraha plainly says. More how plainly says, you know, I, I I wonder who I am. I'm not a demon. I'm not a human. I'm not even a half demon. I'm a quarter demon. I'm just wandering around. You know, it's kind of why I make a lot of noise wherever I go. Cause, because, uh, you know, she's alone. She, she feels lonely. She has no word, you know. She, she's wondering how she even survived this long. It feels like it was luck. And since Suna, the ever Sundere, says, yeah, you're probably right. But... You're alive now. You can change how you live your life. It doesn't. Everything you've done in the past, that stuff doesn't matter because you're alive right now and you can change your past. And Moraha kind of smiles. You know, she smiles and says, yeah, you're right. And Toa says, hey, none of us are alone anymore. We're all together. And she has this nice little moment thinking back saying, you know, I guess none of us are alone. I, I did find, I somehow ended up with these two. That's all right, right, teacher? And then, Episode's over. Next episode, we're going to get the two perils finally teaming up. I don't know why it's taking that long for them to team up. Even the band of seven did work together. Unless it was like the really strong ones. But I digress. I digress. How do I feel about this episode? Well, let me touch on uh, the last episode. Um, I'm going to put a little article in, article in here. Uh, there was a lot of people. I thought I was the only one. There's quite a few people that were happy that the Shishomaru Ren shipping thing turned out to be true because a lot of them actually called that a long time ago, like myself. And someone, someone brought something very poignant to the discussion. They said instead of people worrying about you know the age because obviously Ren is of age, Shishomaru is a 500 year old dog demon that just chooses to have this human form. Ren is more of a furry than you worrying about the age gap, which I thought was I thought that was funny and a funny way of bringing attention to it. Just people need to chill. Now, if people raged about that but didn't rage about this episode where Moraha was basically sold into slavery not once but twice, then you got your then you, then you need to really think because Ren is obviously of age. Time is passing, guys. Even though Moraha three years ago still looks like Moraha right now. Morha of current era is like 15-ish, 15, 16-ish. I mean, she was 13, and that was, and Inuyasha and, his, and, and uh, Kagoma were already gone. That means people were already older back then. People need, y'all need to chill. Back on this episode, I'm going to get to, I'm going to go from least to worst. The least thing is I'm annoyed with, the, with, with calling the final move, Crimson Backlash Wave. Backlash Wave should have been a thing that her dad taught her. It would have felt like a legacy lineage thing being passed down. How can you teach a Backlash Wave if he didn't teach it from you and you didn't learn it from someone? You could have called that move anything else. And I would have preferred you to call it anything else because I don't need another Kamehameha situation. I don't need another Spirit Gun situation. She could have just had a thing all on Crimson Dragon Wave. Okay, this could have been called Reverse Dragon Reverse Dragon Wave. That would have been awesome. That's a way better name than Crimson Backlash Wave. That's a that sounds like an Ingigasha move. Uh, she just call it Reverse Dragon Wave. One thing I didn't forget to mention: she did uh, she did the Blades of Blood. Uh, usually Ingigasha wastes that he's bleeding to do it. She just rips her own arm and just does it. So that was pretty cool to see that. Um, the one thing I am mostly annoyed about, and I guess you can call this weeb anger, the plot holes. The plot holes, the plot holes. I will take off my glasses for this one. How did Kanton, one, know that they were teacher and student unless he had already seen the interaction that she ha has had with Morha or saw the interactions that she, Yagarari, had with Jubei? How did he know about the armor of Iron Rat constantly that hurt that she needed it? And that, hey, I'm gonna slaughter this whole group that we we as watchers never knew this was a whole group. 
unless someone else, unless you guys have found some type of literature that I have never seen. No one knew these people was this. So they killed the women and the children on some Anakin Skywalker shit. And I'm trying to understand him. I'm trying to understand why would he, how would he know that that exact moment she'd be going there for that? Like, we only saw, only person that did the dream, dream dive was Ki, uh, Kiyoku. Yeah, Kiyoku or Kiyoki. The, the tiger lady, the winged tiger lady, the cool winged tiger lady that should have been the last boss. Instead of this fool, who's nothing but a poor man's Naraku. Because in my opinion, you know how this could have, this, she could have been around for at least three to four more episodes instead of dying in this episode. It could have been a situation like with Naraku and Kohaku, where it's like, hey, you know, I got this thing you need. Go kill your your student. Oh, you're not going to kill him. You're going to try to double cross me? That's okay. I'm going to keep you around. I'm going to put you in situations where you got to do what I say unless you don't want to die and get crushed or you don't want to see her get killed. Ooh, I just came up with with something to keep her around longer. It's easy. This could have even been a two-parter. It's just the, the plot hole of him knowing all of this made no sense. And him being able to find this hidden place that is hard to find. The robe of fire rat is super rare. And obviously the armor is super rare because not a lot of people even know what it does without being told. This thing's apparently going to crush me. It just... Uh, that part made no sense. And uh, I, I, I like fan service. You know, I like seeing the harpies. I don't like that you called it the Crimson Backlash Wave, and I don't like this poor man's Naraku. This guy's more annoying than interesting. He's not even annoying in a good way. He's not annoying in a Dio Brando kind of way. He's not annoying in a Naraku kind of way. He's not a, He's not even annoying in an Aizen kind of way, and I don't like Aizen. And maybe I'll make a video one day on why I don't like Aizen, but I don't know. At the end of this episode, I was happy that I got some uh, Moroha growth, because I didn't even know that she needed it, but when I think back, every time she's pushed against the wall, she was really, she's always either close to using the Rouge, or using the Rouge, so, it's nice that now she has another option, as opposed to busting out the one minute power boost, I really wanted, I was hoping this would have been a five, I, I'm teetering between 3.5 and a four, and that's only because we got background, and we got character growth, and we got to see a nice, cool character, but we lost them all in the same time. So, that's my rating. At the worst, it's a 3.5 because of those stupid plot holes. At the, at the best, it's a 4 because we got to we got to understand why Moraha is the way she is. And we got to address the reason why she's with Jubei. I hope when she changes her life path, I hope she flips him off and just goes away. But she probably won't. She'll probably keep that debt because she actually loved and cared about her teacher. So, guys, thank you for sticking with me. Please remember to comment. Let me know what you thought of the episode. Let me know what you think of these reviews. Um, I, I, I just wish Yagarari was still around. But uh, please remember, subscribe, hit the notification bell, get notified of more videos like this. We do these every Saturday. Please remember to share the video, show your friends all the great analysis that you were given in 20 minutes or less. So, uh, pardon me. Thank you once again. Please remember to wash your hands, wear your mask, be good, be blessed. Black Lives Matter, and I will definitely, definitely see you next time.